This week, Valve dropped the July hardware survey and the numbers are surprising, so let's dive into them. Plus, a new stable Steam Deck client update hits this week with a notable new feature for your library. All this and more today. That's right, it's Steam Deck news time. First up, let's talk about verified games. So Remnant 2 on Steam Deck is ranked as verified, but Timo over at overkill.wtf says that the title does not meet his expectations of what a verified game should be. Painfully unplayable frame rates, poor optimizations for the UE5 engine, and ugly blurry visuals to boot. To be fair to the deck, the game doesn't seem particularly optimized for any PC. However, that's cold comfort for anyone who purchased the title based off of its verified rank. And honestly, this opens up a wider and kind of uncomfortable question about what it means for a game to be verified in the first place. As there have been many verified titles that have experienced Steam Deck players laughing at the idea. We all kind of know in the community that verified does not guarantee a playable or even a middling experience. So I'll open the question up to you. What verified games have you played that didn't live up to the rating? And what can be done about that? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And speaking of games that really didn't live up to expectations, uh, last week I talked about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and I wanted to share some of the thoughts that I have. <laughs> and I have a lot of thoughts. Now I won't go into a full review here, but I will say that it was not exactly what I expected. I had lots of technical issues with the game, despite it being a verified title. And they started immediately. The game crashed after the third intro cutscene, so I had I force quit. And when I loaded the save game, I was just falling in an endless void. I wish I had footage of it, it was pretty funny. I thought I would hit a kill floor, never did, I just kept falling. So I deleted that save and started again. And when I started that game, I was in a dark alley with robot citizens who were just glitching out. Uh, half the collision of the world was also missing. So I restarted again, and finally, after just letting the introduction cutscenes play rather than skipping through them, I got to the first level. So after finally playing the game for about 20 minutes, I ended up experiencing intense nausea. Uh, I tried playing the game a few more times over that weekend, messing with settings, disabling motion blur, but I just kept experiencing motion sickness, so I had to get a refund. Now, I've got to say, I was really excited to play Rift Apart, and I'm disappointed that it made me feel so sick so quickly and so consistently. I don't think that it's the Steam Deck or the frame rate causing it. I tried it on my PC, and I still felt sick. I, I want to know if you experience the same thing or if I'm just a weirdo. Leave me a comment. <laughs> I want to hear your thoughts. And while you're down there, why not like that smash button? It's the best way to tell YouTube that you want to see more videos just like this. You can also subscribe if that's more your speed. I want to thank Webfreak for his continued support of the show. It's because of Webfreak and the 78 other patrons that I'm able to continue making this show, keeping these lights on here for you, so thank you. If you want to help support the show, you can use the links to Patreon below. It's all greatly appreciated, and thanks. All right, have you had trouble with antitrustable shenanigans? And by that, I mean, have you had trouble with Ubisoft Connect games recently? If so, you'll be happy to hear that Valve has actually served up a fix. Uh, it took Valve about a day to issue a fix after the most recent Ubisoft Connect update ended up screwing around with a lot of Steam Deck players. Uh, they were not able to launch the game with some ambiguous errors popping up. So all you need to do in order to apply this fix is switch your game over to the latest version of Proton Experimental, and it should just work after that. To do this, highlight the game in your Steam library, press the start or menu button, whatever the hell this button is called nowadays, and then choose properties. Uh, navigate to the compatibility tab on the left and then check the force compatibility tool option and then choose Proton Experimental in the drop down. All right, next up, are you a fan of Diablo? Want to give it a spin on your Steam Deck? This process just got a whole lot simpler thanks to Diablo's source port Devolution X coming to Flathub. Now you can switch over to desktop mode on your deck, launch the Discover Store, and then search for Devolution X. If you're not familiar, as I mentioned, this is a culmination of years of community effort. The game bills itself as, quote, Devolution X is a port of Diablo and Hellfire that strives to make it simple to run the game while providing engine improvements, bug fixes, and some optional quality of life features. Now this engine supports the original Diablo as well as its expansion Hellfire, and you can get the required asset files from the original CD, or you can buy a copy of the game over on GOG. So if you're a fan of Diablo, check out Devolution X through the Discover Store. I'm a huge fan of these source ports and community managed uh, 
uh, clients for games. So it's great to see these, even if they're not really games that I'm gonna play. All right, this week we have some huge news. This is actually probably some of the biggest news that I've ever covered when it comes to Linux gaming. Uh, this week, Valve released the latest Steam hardware survey, and we've seen a big increase in Linux adoption. This comes on the heels of the Steam Summer Sale, deeply discounting the Steam Deck and having the hardware sell out across multiple regions. The increase in adoption here has been huge with Linux usage jumping half a percentage point and overtaking macOS share on the hardware survey. Now, I won't lie, as a massive Linux fan, I have been waiting years to see this result here, uh, and it's truly awesome to see it happening. As I like to do, I put these survey results into my custom-built spreadsheet that helps simplify the math and suss out other trends in the data. And according to the math here, Steam Hollow is accounting for 0.83% of all operating system usage on Steam. That might sound like a minuscule percentage, but when you do the math, that's roughly 2.76 million monthly active users running SteamOS. Now, that number assumes that there's 336 million Steam users overall. I'm extrapolating that number using data I found on Backlinko, which there's gonna be a link to the sources below. Um, I've derived the 336 million number by calculating the average year over year growth from Backlinko between 2016 and 2020. And the growth rate averages out to be about 1.3% month over month. Um, if my math is wrong here, let me know, but this is what I'm basing everything on. Given that Valve celebrated 1 million Steam Decks sold in October of 2022, and that in October of that year, the Steam Decks GPU accounted for 3.2% of all Steam users on the hardware survey, we can roughly estimate that there was about 300 million monthly active users in October of 2022. From there, assuming our growth rate is steady, that gives us a rough estimate of the current user base for July at 336 million. And then we can calculate the absolute numbers from the percentages on the hardware survey. Now, as we can see, these numbers say that there are 6.6 .6 million monthly active Linux users on Steam, and that's a pretty staggering number. And that's roughly 400,000 more Linux users than there are macOS users running Steam now. Linux usership on the Steam hardware survey has for the first time surpassed those of macOS and kind of leapfrogged it in a spectacular way. Uh, what a time to be alive, honestly. What do you think? How does my math check out here? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. I might've made some erroneous assumptions, so let me know down below. Finally, let's talk about the new Steam Deck client update. This is a stable channel update, which falls in line with the monthly stable release cadence that we've come to expect from Steam Deck at this point. And this new release doesn't feature anything revolutionary, but it does have at least one interesting feature. So let's dive into the release notes and see what happened. To start, this release comes with uh, improved library performance and many fixes for folks with large libraries. My favorite new feature is that you can sort your library by the date that the title was added to your library, which is a huge feature I've been waiting for for a while. Then for Steam input, they added the ability to copy and paste mappings when setting up controller inputs, which should be a massive time saver, honestly. They also improved navigation in the configurator when navigating from the preview screen, and they introduced some Steam input bug fixes. For desktop mode, they added a new in-game setting to enable or disable display scaling on the overlay, which is a huge deal for high-res screens. They changed the behavior of the tab browser in the overlay to clear all tabs when the close button is clicked, and they also updated the developer console in a number of meaningful ways. All in all, another solid release for the Steam Deck's stable channel. Well, that's all the Steam Deck news I could find for this week. Did I miss a story? Leave me a comment and let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I want to give a shout out to my friends on Patreon, my YouTube members, and our ViewSync Premium members who make what we do here a reality. If you believe in the work I'm doing, you can use the links below to show your support. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today, and I'll see you guys in the next one.